Hi friends, welcome back to our YouTube channel. Today we have to discuss one of the most important concept in computer organization and architecture is DMA. DMA stands for Direct Memory Access. First of all, what is the purpose of DMA? A peripheral devices or a IO devices wants to send some data to the main memory without involvement of CPU. For that purpose, we have to use DMA concept. How it can be done? A peripheral device wants to send some data to the main memory. First, it sends a DMA request to the DMA controller in the form of DRQ. Now, the DMA controller can send the hold request signal to the CPU in the form of HLQ. Now, the CPU can release the control over the memory buses such as address bus and data bus. Then, it can send the hold acknowledgement signal to the DMA controller. Now, the DMA controller can act as a master and takes the control over the memory buses from the CPU and can manage the memory uh, and can manage the memory operation that means data transfer operation between the peripheral devices and main memory. So, during DMA transfer operation, the CPU is in a ideal position and has no control over the memory buses. Now, the CPU can be act as a slave. At the same time, DMA controller can act as a master and takes the control over the memory buses from the CPU and can manage the data transfer operation between the peripheral devices and main memory. DMA to perform the DMA transfer operation, CPU can use as two control signal that facilitates the DMA transfer. So, this is the DMA operation can be explained by using this diagram and this diagram. Okay. So, this diagram shows CPU bus signals for DMA transfer. To perform the DMA transfer, CPU uses these two signals. Okay. DMA uses the bus request line to request the CPU to release the control over the memory buses. CPU terminates the currently executing instruction and places the address bus, data bus, read and write lines are in a high impedance state. High impedance state is a, it can be behaves like as a open circuit so, the output is disconnected from the input. At that time, CPU activates the bus grant signal line, bus grant output line and informs the DMA controller. So, these buses are in a high impedance state. Now, CPU release the control over the memory buses. Now, the DMA controller can take the control over the memory buses and can manage the data transfer operation between the peripheral devices and main memory. Once the data transfer operation can be completed between the peripheral devices and the main memory, DMA controller disables the bus request line. After that, CPU also disables the bus grant line and takes the control over the memory buses after releasing the buses from the DMA controller. Now, the CPU can return 
to its normal operation. In this way, DMA operation can be done. Mainly, DMA can be used to transfer the data at fastest rate without involvement of CPU. Now, DMA allows the peripheral device to transfer data to or from the memory without involvement of CPU. Now, DMA transfer can be done in several ways. Among them, two are more important. One is burst transfer and second one is cycle stealing. Okay. Before going to the burst transfer, okay, first observe this diagram. This is a memory block. This memory block contains five memory words. First one, second one, third one, fourth one and fifth one. So, this memory block contains a sequence of five memory words. Now, in DMA burst transfer, an entire block can be transferred. In this block, five sequence of memory words can be exist. In burst transfer, an entire block can be transferred. Until the entire block is transferred, we are not stopping or slow down the data transmission operation. Okay. Whereas in the case of cycle stealing, we are transferring one data word at a time. We are transferring one data word at a time. After transferring one data word, DMA can release the control over the memory buses to the CPU. Okay. So, what is the difference between burst transfer and cycle stealing? In the case of burst transfer, we are transferring an entire block of words between the peripheral devices and main memory. Whereas, in the case of cycle stealing, we are transferring only one data word at a time. Okay. For transferring one data word at a time, we are using cycle stealing. We are transferring a sequence of memory words in the form of a block. We are using burst transfer. Okay. So, in this way, DMA transfer can be done. Okay. So, thank you. Thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, please click on the like button and share this video to your friends and classmates after subscribing my YouTube channel, Divvela Srinivasarao. So, thank you. Thank you one and all for watching this video. In cycle stealing, we are transferring one data word at a time, whereas in the case of burst transfer, a sequence of memory words in the form of a memory block can be transferred. Okay.